Hello guys, I'm CFC Alex and welcome back. If you're new around here, please do consider subscribing. I'll massively appreciate it. Also, if you like contents like these, give a like too. Now, first of all, I want to apologize for not uploading for the past week. I know I did say that I would basically putting out transfer news content. Obviously, because of the transfer ban, it's not like we're going to be doing much. Um, but in addition to that, I... Let's just say that there's something that has happened uh, in my personal life, family-wise, that has restricted me from doing any videos. Uh, you might have seen it on my Twitter or on my Instagram. I'm not going to go into much detail because the more I talk about it, the more it hurts. And I just really want to get on with this video. But yeah, um... This is basically a Chelsea versus Arsenal preview. I'll try to get this out as soon as possible. Obviously, um, I basically waited until, depending on when this comes out, it's basically on Tuesday night because I wanted to collect some information as much as possible on certain events that occurred, uh, obviously, today um, in relation to this preview. So I thought it was important to just wait, collect information as much as you can, and then afterwards, you know, put out your preview. So yeah, um, let's get started with the preview. So obviously, as we know, it's Chelsea versus Arsenal in the Europa League final in Baku. And it's going to be at 8 p.m. British Summer Time in Azerbaijan. I think it's going to be at 11 p.m. I'm not sure. I think that's what it's going to be local time. And yeah, so... It is going to be a very interesting London der uh, derby. It's a huge rivalry between the two sides. You know, Chelsea and Arsenal. Um, it's definitely something where it has a lot of history uh, in terms of rivalry. Um, there isn't that much hate for both sides, but it's like, you know... Um, it it's not as bad as Chelsea against Tottenham or Arsenal against Tottenham. I mean, we do have a bit more respect for one another. But there is a rivalry in there. And, you know, I think in this competition, if it was just, I don't know, um, let's say Chelsea versus Valencia or Arsenal versus Frankfurt, there wouldn't be such a huge, bigger desire or bigger passion to win this game, potentially from Chelsea, um, because they've achieved their targets, right? They finished top four, they're in the Europa League final. They basically got through to the Carabao Cup final. Unfortunately, they did get knocked out in the fifth round of the FA Cup. But basically, the two targets were there. You know, achieve Europa League final and achieve top four. Obviously, they did that by finishing third. Compared to Arsenal, well, I mean, they finished fifth in the league. And they really need to get into Champions League. Because, well... <sighs> Let's just say that while, you know, it would guarantee some sort of European success that they haven't had in a very long time. I mean, when you think about it, they need the Champions League revenue. And, I mean, they need Champions League football as well. So, you know, to be able to basically bring in players of higher quality than they have right now. So there's much more pressure on Arsenal to deliver and to get a result in this game rather than on Chelsea. And, you know, when you've seen them perform in the Premier League over the last few games, you've, under pressure, you've seen them collapse in the Premier League. And that shocked me. I mean, how many times, obviously I'm, I'm going to go over this again, but how many times have teams like Tottenham, Man United, Arsenal, been given the opportunity to secure third place and not manage to. And we secured third place, even though, from my perspective, we've not had a great season. We've not had a good enough season to deserve third place. I mean, it's mental to me. But anyways, uh, let's get into the Europa League. Um, well, I mean, I have to say, this is the second all-time Europa League Final, if I remember correctly, the first one was Spurs versus Wolves in 1972. I hope I got that right. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, if you look at Chelsea and Arsenal, obviously we have a lot of injuries, right? Uh, you look at Arsenal, they have the likes of Holding, of Bellerin, of Welbeck, of Ramsey. Uh, I think I'm missing one. 
Uh, yeah, Dennis Suarez. There we go. And, you know, when you look at it, I think the two biggest losses for Arsenal are Bellerin and Ramsey because both of them understand the rivalry, I'd say, between Chelsea and Arsenal and that desire to win. And I, I have to say, the fact that they're not playing gives me a little bit of hope that we have an opportunity. But then you look at our injuries and you see Rudiger, who's going to be enjoy, uh, injured for, I don't know, a couple of months. Ruben off to Sheik, Hudson Odoi, and then Kante, who's doubtful. So what I do know for a fact is that Kante, obviously, has, as you've all seen, if you watch the BT Sport preview, he basically had a fitness test while the while the team was warming up for 15 minutes. Um, then afterwards, obviously, he joined um, the the squads in part of that. Uh, warming up process because he was cleared for that um, fitness test as um, as I was told and then after that when it came to the ball working or match practice basically Kante basically discussed with the club doctor and I think Chelsea really wanted to take a precaution on the step and what they did instead was pretty much say okay look we're not going to go any further you just go and, you know, end your session here. We'll come back tomorrow and we'll do another fitness test. If you're good there, then I think that'll be fine. I, my supposition is that if he's cleared from the fitness test tomorrow, he will be likely at least a substitute on the bench. So, yeah, uh, basically, I wanted to take some time to make sure that I got those facts around. Then you have the situation about Mkhitaryan, obviously for Arsenal. Um, all I know about this, I'm not going to dive into it in much detail, but I do know that there's a little bit of an issue politically between um, Armenia and Azerbaijan. I don't know what the details of it are, so I'm not going to want to say things that are absolutely untrue, but I do know that there's a bit of an issue there. Now let's look at the major European finals for both clubs. When you look at Chelsea... They've won four out of the five major European finals. Um, they basically won two Cup Winners' Cup. They won the Champions League in 2012. And they won in 2013 their Europa League. You look at Arsenal. <laughs> um, <coughs> hasn't been great for them. They've obviously been to five European finals, but they've lost four. So they, it's the exact opposite. Three of them, so three of the latest ones include a 1995 Cup Winners' Cup, uh, the 2000 UEFA Cup, which is currently known as uh, the UEFA Europa League, and the 2006 Champions League final against Barcelona. So, you know, when you come to this situation, you're like, hmm, in terms of, if you're just looking at the history, you know, you'd assume maybe Chelsea have the advantage. Well, the thing is, though, what makes me doubt about that specifically is that you look at Emery, at Sevilla, he won three Europa League trophies in a row. And to me, it's completely shocking that he managed to do that with Sevilla from 2014 to 2016. Obviously, I guess that's why PSG hired him because they saw, you know, a guy who really performed in Europa League, you know, maybe he can perform in the Champions League. But not only that, it's basically the fact that he has the most Europa League trophy wins out of all of the managers that are out there. So yeah, to me, that's very interesting. Now, let's basically look at, in terms of like the key players or the key threats. Obviously, the key players meaning uh, for Chelsea and the key threats meaning for Arsenal. You look at Chelsea, I think the key players, one of them is definitely going to be Olivier Giroud. He has basically 10 goals in the Europa League, uh, which is the most scored by any Chelsea player in a European competition, excluding qualifiers, of course. And then you've got Eden Hazard, who apparently seems to be quite motivated for this game. And we all know that when a player is like Eden Hazard is very motivated for this game, he's going to shine, right? If there's that desire, that motivation to drive you, it's, I mean, obviously, because it is Arsenal and it is a London rivalry, I personally feel in this situation that Eden Hazard could maybe get a goal, could maybe contribute to a goal, basically an assist. 
I mean, who knows, but it feels like Eden Hazard really wants to win this trophy. And then when you look at Arsenal, I think, to be honest, the key threats are pretty obvious. It's going to be Aubameyang and Lacazette. And personally, I wouldn't be surprised if both of them started. And the reason why I think that is because, you know, in the last eight goals for Arsenal, both players contributed each to four goals. Obviously, four plus four makes eight goals. And... And to me, that's <laughs> um, when you've got something like that, that is a pretty deadly attacking force. The main weakness for Arsenal is going to be their defense. I think that's pretty clear. But their main strength is going to be the attack. And whether or not Chelsea can cope with this, with this attacking threat, I think that will be the key factor um, for whether we can defend, you know, well and make sure we don't concede any goals now lastly i just want to end on this segment obviously you've all heard by now the sari incident that is basically being spread around um you know of sari storming off the pitch now obviously there's been people just throwing out um thoughts on what's going on some people not even knowing what exactly happened but i guess that's the advantage of me having a source that way i can tell you guys what actually happened now let's start off with what was the plan in terms of training wise when they were inside the stadium basically sari's plan in terms of training was 15 minute warm-up 15 minutes in terms of like match practice or ball work um if you will 15 minutes in terms of shooting practice and 15 minutes when it comes to set piece training. You have the third training, which I have to say, um, apparently Sari was really annoyed about because he saw the fact that the players lacked spirit and focus doing that training. They were basically just having fun and not really caring doing the shooting practice, if you will. And so that made him even angrier. And then you have um, doing that shooting practice. You know, he basically asked if there was a way to make sure that the final 15 minutes of the uh, training session, final 15 to 20 minutes, which was going to be focused on set plays, was closed stuff to the public or to, to media uh, in general, where basically in that sense, the stadium would be closed off to officials, media, um, and all that. And his the response from BT Sport and a match of it and the stadium officials was, "No, we're not going to allow you to do that." And that's where you see Sari throwing a fit and walks off down into the tunnel. And according to my source, he basically told them. Um, something along the lines of, you know, why make us come here for the final if you don't allow us to prepare the way we want? Uh, so, yeah, I mean, he was really fed up. And that's why, basically, he left and he cancelled the fifteen, the last 15 minutes. Because he wanted that um, set uh, play uh, training to be closed off and to make sure maybe that the opposition didn't really know what they were planning. And so that really infuriated him that he could not really have a say at all in what was going on. And look, the reason why I said this is because obviously I do know that there are Sari fans out there. Some of them keyboard warriors, some of them just like very reactionary. Um, you know, that will just bounce on anything that Sari may do wrong or may seem wrong or anything. And... I don't know, it just infuriates me at times. <sighs> Look, at least you guys know what actually happened. But I, given the situation, it doesn't give me much confidence that we are going to win this final. Because this, if this is how the players have been acting, then how on earth are we going to win the final? But yeah, guys, that pretty much wraps it up. Please leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it. Leave your thoughts in the comment section down below. Do you think Arsenal will win? Do you think Chelsea will win? You know, do you think maybe it will be a tight game? Will we go to penalties? You know, just give me your thoughts on that front. Subscribe to the channel. I would massively appreciate it. And once you've done that, press the bell notification button. I'll catch you guys later.